Hello guys, bones and effects in Guild Wars 2 can be confusing because there are endless details to them. Guild Wars 2 doesn't have any official add-on or website to see buff up times, but you somehow need to measure it to understand how you performed. We will analyze and learn about buffs and how to measure your performance in the next 3 videos, because for in-game content, whatever you play, you will be expected to carry your own weight the least. In this video, we will go through offensive buffs. This will bring you awareness of what you need for certain situations and what is probably causing problems on your runs. Right on your utility bar, you will see buffs says orange symbols and under that you will see effects lining up. There are much more effects than buffs because banners, foods, Boosters are all considered effects, so your effects bar can go a little crazy. First things first, Guild Wars 2 buffs can be stacked. Some buffs can stack intensity, but the limit to that is 25. And some cannot stack intensity, they stack their duration instead. And the cap for it is 30 seconds. Stacking buffs and stacking duration can be manipulated with other sources like your runes, sigils, foods you use. For example, to extend the duration of the buffs given, you should use foods with concentration. There are also runes and sigils increases the duration of the boon you give. Secondly, there is a priority to buffs. That's why you need certain roles for each of your subgroups in your squad. This is because some buffs can only be shared with 5 people. And since that buff will prioritize the subgroup, you put only one of that buff to that subgroup. You probably know what boon corruption is a thing in Guild Wars 2. But did you know, when boons get corrupted, they actually turn to specific debuffs? Guild Wars 2 buffs can be categorized as damage buffs and defensive buffs. There is also another category in the dummy training area called as utility buffs, uh, but we can still categorize it like this too. Damage buffs are there to boost your group DPS. Ways to boost the damage of a power class or a conda class can differ. For defensive buffs, some of them are very situational, meaning you would bring certain defensive buffs for only certain mechanics. But some of them are needed for your basic survival. So what's important for your group, what buffs are expandable for the success of that kill, will not only depend on the boss, it will also depend on your players as well. What can they play, what are they comfortable with, what they can and what they cannot do. So I know this is a blurry information, but this is where it goes endlessly deep if you want to detail it boss by boss. There is no one optimized group structure you can bring to every boss to success. Experience is what you need for this. So let's go through boss now. Might is a pure damage increase. Every stack of might will increase your skill damage, auto attack damage and condition damage. This is one buff you really want your group to keep at 25 max stacks throughout the fight, because it provides pure DPS increase, loss of might will cause huge DPS loss. One player can lose up to give or take 10k DPS just for this. Let's say you have 6 DPS players, that means you're losing 60k DPS per second, and 60k DPS can make a difference for a group. So our second buff is Alacrity, in short Alak. Alacrity shortens skill cooldowns, especially if you are playing a class that depends heavily on skill casting, Alacrity is the thing for you. Mesmer's Alacrity rotation has a high skill cap, definitely not for beginners, so if you are a beginner and want to work on giving Alacrity, my suggestion definitely would be Machinist and Revenant and a Mesmer if you like challenges. Alacrity is a 5 man buff. Another way to understand if you are getting alacrity is when you have green numbers on your bars. That means alacrity is active. If the numbers are white, it is not. There can be a couple of reasons for it. There might be a mechanic keeping your alacrity source busy, such as if they are trapped in something, or if they are on the other side of the room because they got teleported because of mechanics, 
for example on male guardian so the amount of alacrity you get depends on how comfortable your alak is with its class and how much your alak knows about the content you're doing for these reasons to keep buffs at max groups usually don't give these kind of supports mechanics to do the next buff is fury fury increases your crit chance by 20 percent the lack of fury can really hurt your group DPS, and this will get confusing now, so listen carefully. A fun fact for you, conditions do not do crit damage in Guild Wars 2. One sec of bleeding, let's say if it will do 10 HP per second, it will always damage you 10 HP per second, but they can get affected by mites, so 10 damage per second can become 20 damage per second but might increases their pure damage they still won't do crit damage whatever the condition is so the damage per second which comes from the conditions doesn't do crits but here is a mind-blowing fact for you the flat damage of the condi aoe's do power damage so they can crit same for all the weapon auto attacks i know this was confusing so let me explain in detail there are two kinds of damage a Kondi AoE does. This is the flat damage of the skill, AoE's own damage. This can crit because it hits power damage. That is exactly why when you are playing a Kondi class and use a Kondi skill but see crit numbers. Same with Necro Staff. Staff leaves bleeding on the enemy. Staff leaves condition on the enemy. That bleeding or the condition whatever you are leaving with your auto attacks won't crit but as you can see my staff auto attacks keep hitting crit damage. It's because the flat damage of the weapon is power. But the bleeding damage it stacks with every auto attack will not crit. But both condi damage and the power damage will be affected by the might I have. So wherever you go, whatever in-game content you do, you want to take might with you. If your squad has only Kondi DPS, you want might. If your squad is mostly power DPS, you still bring might. But Fury is mostly for power DPS because, as you just learned, it doesn't affect Kondi classes directly. So if your squad is all Kondi DPS, you will prioritize other buffs instead of Fury. Some classes can provide fury easily such as Dreads, they can use Warhorn 5th skill or just Storm Spirit but you will see they don't often do that even though it's the perfect content in the group to bring fury. One reason might be underestimating the importance of this buff because Dreads also focus on healing and giving might so they might be just putting fury into the optional buffs category. The second reason can be it might be a challenging content so they might not be comfortable with the content so they can focus healing more than giving that buff. So it eventually comes down to if they are comfortable with the content they are doing or if they know what they are doing at all. Quickness causes your skills and actions to happen faster. This is one of the best buffs that will boost your group DPS. Do not confuse this with alacrity because alacrity shortens the cooldowns. Here you can see the difference between with or without quickness. On this video we focused on damage buffs, on the next video the focus will be defensive buffs. Thank you for watching, if this guide was useful for you, you can always subscribe to support me in making of these guides. Have a nice day!